Hello students, this is Mrs. Yaud, and today I'm going to teach you Chapter 2, Lesson 3 from Algebra 1. We are going to solve inequalities using multiplication and division. All right, before we get into doing some problems, I want to go over something that happens when you add, subtract, multiply, and divide by positive and negative numbers, okay? So you'll notice that I created four number lines here, and they're all exactly the same. In every single number line, I have a red dot. Right now it's at negative three and a green dot. Right now it is at positive one. And in all four cases, red is less than green, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do on the very first number line is I'm gonna add three to both sides of this equation. So let's see what happens to our red dot. When we add three, one, two, three, it's going to end up at zero so it is no longer at negative three. And our green dot, one, two, three, is gonna end up at four, so it's no longer at one. But the fundamental thing I wanna look at here is, is this still true? Is red still less than green? And we can see for sure that it definitely is. So I'm gonna put a star here, yep, that's still true. Okay, this time on the second one, I'm going to subtract three on both sides. So the red dot is going to move from negative three, one, two, three, now it's at negative six, and it's no longer at negative three. And the green dot uh, was at one, so one, two, three, it's at negative two now, and it's no longer at positive one. And once again, if we look at this concept over here, is red still less than green? And yes, we can see on the number line that that is definitely true. Okay, on the third number line, what we're going to do is multiply by 3 this time. And so let's see what happens to our dots this time. So uh, the red dot multiplied by 3, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So this is negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. So it becomes at negative 9 here and it is no longer at the negative three. And the green dot was at one, and one times three is three. So it's going to go here at positive three, and it's no longer uh, at one. So now let's take a look, is this still true? Is red still less than green? Red became a, a much lower on the number line, and green went a little bit higher on the number line. So it is definitely still true. Red is still less than green. Okay, let's see what happens when we multiply by a negative three this time. Okay, so this time my red was at negative three. Uh-oh, something weird happens here. Negative three times negative three is actually positive nine. So it, uh, this red dot goes all the way up to positive 9, way up here, and becomes a positive 9, and it's no longer a negative number. Hmm, that's interesting. How about the green one? Well, uh, green was at 1, and 1 times a negative 3 is, oh, interesting. This goes down to negative 3. It's actually where the other one was, so I'm going to erase this one here and make it green. It's actually green now. So they kind of slipped, uh, changed places, didn't they? The red dot that was negative actually turned out to be a positive number and the green dot that was positive actually turned out to be a negative number. Well, that was weird. Okay, so then let's take a look at this concept over here. Is red still less than green? Nope, not at all. Red is higher on the number line this time, where green is lower on the number line. I should cross that off because he's no longer there. So what we can say then is that uh, what actually happens instead, this is no longer true. Now red is greater than green. And that is a very fundamental, important thing to understand. When you're adding and subtracting numbers on a number line and you have an inequality, they still you still keep the same inequality. When you're multiplying by a positive number, you still keep the same inequality. 
but it's very interesting. When you multiply and divide, by the way, it also works for division. So when you multiply or divide by a negative number, what was less than flipped around and became greater than. And that's why we need to flip the sign when we multiply or divide by a negative number. So now looking at your journals, we're going to start on page 40. This is the core concept that we just discovered. If you have something that's true, in this case negative 6 is less than 8, and you multiply by a positive number, uh, then it's going to stay the same. It's still going to be less than. And it, here's another example for greater than as well. So if A is greater than B, and you multiply by a number that has to be greater than zero, uh, then what happens is the sign does not change. And so that works for greater than and less than and greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. And by the way, it works for multiplication like they have here, and it also works for division, okay? But down below, if you look at this one now, Let's see what happens here. Negative 6 is less than 8, which is true, but we multiply by a negative number. Now negative 6 and negative 2 become a positive, and 8, which was positive, now flips back to negative. So that means that if it was less than, it flips over to greater than. And here's another example of that. So that means if you multiply or divide by a negative number, so this time c is less than 0, then what you have to do is you have to flip-flop that sign. So if it was greater than, it flips to less than. And if it was um, greater than here for division, then it flips to less than. Okay? And that is always going to be true uh, for multiplying or dividing by a negative. So that means that you just have to really, really watch for that. Okay? Pay attention to your negatives, especially when you're, you are doing inequality problems. So let's take a look at number one. What we are doing on number one is we need to take out our, we have a x here, so we need to get rid of our 6. So we divide by the 6. Now, some people think, oh, oh, there's a negative here. That means I need to flip the sign. Nope. You have to remember that the, the number that you're dividing by or the number that you're multiplying by has to be negative. In this case, we are dividing by a positive number, which means that our sign in this case does not flip. So x is less than negative 5. So if we draw that on the number line, we're going to have an open circle at negative 5, and we're heading down. That means that all of these answers are correct. And remember, it's open circle because it doesn't have the equal to. It's just less than. So that means it does not include the number 5. Let's go ahead and check our work for that. Uh, let's plug in a negative 6 here. So that means uh, 6 multiplied by negative 6 should be less than negative 30. So we have negative 36 is less than negative 30. Yep, that works. Then we would want that to work because negative 6 is part of our answer. Let's plug in 0. 0 is always a good one to plug in. So 6 multiplied by 0 should be le it should at less than negative 30. That's 0 less than negative 30. Nope, this time it's not correct. And we would expect that because 0 is not part of our solution set. Okay, you go ahead and do number 2 on your own and turn the video back on and see if you got it right. All right, I got my answer as a 3 is less than or equal to f, or if I flipped it around, f is greater than or equal to 3. So this time we have a closed circle at 3, and we are heading up. Okay, let's take a look at number 3. This time we have a fraction. And so remember what you need to do. And every time you have a fraction, you want to multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by the reciprocal of that. So that would be 7 over 3. And we would need to do that on both sides. And the reason why you do that is because 7 divided by 7 is 1. And also 3 divided by 3 is also 1. And you're only left with the variable f. And then on the left side, we can simplify by canceling out our 7s. And so we are left with negative 6 divided by 3. Um, and so that is going to give us negative 2. So then we have negative 2 is less than or equal to f. And if we flip that around, f is greater than or equal to negative 2. And so if we're going to put that on our number line, flip that up a little bit, we are going to have our 
um, closed circle at negative 2 and heading up. Okay, let's take a look at number 4. This time what we're dividing by is a negative. So the negative is connected to the 4. So that means that we do have to flip our sign around. And so what we end up getting is m is less than or equal to. Notice I flipped my sign. It was greater than or equal to. Now it's less than or equal to. So less than or equal to negative 16 divided by negative 4 is positive 4. And so to graph that on a number line, we have a closed circle at 4 heading down. OK, you go ahead and do number 5 on your own. All right, I ended up getting x is less than negative 2. Notice I had to flip my sign around because uh, x was being divided by a negative 6. So I multiplied by a negative. So I flipped my sign from greater than to less than. And so then we have an open circle at negative 2 heading down. All right, on number 6, we have 1 is less than or equal to negative 1 fourth y. So here is our variable. We need to get rid of the negative 1 fourth. Remember, it's a fraction, so you want to multiply by the reciprocal, which is negative 4 over 1, or just negative 4. And the reason, again, why we do that is the 4s cancel, and the 1s cancel, and even the negative times the negative is now a positive, and so that means that you're left with just plain old y on that side. Now you have to be careful here. We multiplied by a negative, so what do we do to our sign? That's right, we got to flip it around. OK, so now we have what's on the other side, which is negative 4 times 1, so that's negative 4. And so when I graph that, I have a closed circle at negative 4, and I'm heading down. All right, let's take a look at number 7. So we have a, uh, our variable is next to the negative 4, so that means we need to divide out negative 4 divide out negative 4. So a lot of people get really confused when they see this. Um, so remember, let's just think about it. Negative 2 thirds divided by negative 4 over 1. So if we keep change flip, that's going to be negative 2 thirds multiplied by negative 1 fourth. OK, so let's think about that for a minute. How can we go and go straight from this uh, concept and change it to this concept. So one thing that we could do, if I erase this here, one thing that we could do is anytime you see a fraction like this, I always like to just to go straight to multiplying by the reciprocal. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of uh, negative 4. So that's going to be negative 1 fourth, right? And then over here, multiply by negative 1 fourth. It's just a little bit easier. Anytime you see a fraction, like here, even if it's on the other side, just go straight to multiplying by the reciprocal because that's what you're going to end up doing anyway and it saves a whole lot of time. And the reason why that works, once again, is uh, let's say that this was over 1. So we have uh, the negatives cancels out, the 4s cancel out, the 1s, everything cancels out except for the variables. So that's why that works, okay? Okay, so what we're going to do is we have double negatives, so that becomes positive. We have 2 over 12. We simplify this if we want to. Um, so it's going to be 1 over 6, all right? So then we have our answer is going to be 1 6 is, remember, we got to flip our sign. We always have to go back and think about what did we end up dividing by? That was so long ago. We divided by a negative number, so that means that this sign gets flip-flopped around and becomes greater than now, uh, and then we have to put our variable. So this is our answer, and if you want to flip it around like I like to do, then you would write it like this. So our 1 6 is really close to 0. It's about right there. So I need to make sure to make it an open circle. And we are heading down. All right, I'd like you to try number 8 on your own. OK, uh, this is one of the times usually I leave things in improper fractions. So I would leave it as 5 over 2. But because I'm t putting it on a number line, I changed it to 2 and a half because that's easier for me to know where it goes on a number line. Either way, you should have a closed circle at 2.5 and, and heading down. All right, number 9. There are, at most, 36 red and blue marbles in a bag. The number of red marbles is twice the number of blue marbles. Write and solve an inequality that represents the greatest number of red marbles are in the bag. 
Okay, so let's think about this. We have red and blue marbles. So I'm going to start with the very first sentence here. There are at most 36 red and blue marbles in a bag. So if we think about it, we know that there's red and blue. We don't know how many of each there are, but we know we have some red and blue marbles, and there are at most 36. So that means that it could be 36, but it could also be less than 36. So we're going to write less than or equal to 36. All right, let's take a look at the second sentence. The number of red marbles is twice the number of blue marbles. So if we think about red, the word is, remember the word is tells you where your equal sign is. So red is twice the number of blue. So we would say two times the number of blue. Okay, so since we know that red is equal to 2b, what we can do is we can take this and substitute it in for the r over here. So instead of r, we're going to write 2b, and then the rest of it's going to stay the same. Plus b is less than or equal to 36, and now we're going to solve for b. So it's 3b is less than or equal to 36, so b is less than or equal to 12. But remember over here, we know that red is twice the number of b. So that means if b has to be less than or equal to 12, then what we can say is that the red has to be less than or equal to twice that amount, which is 24. So the red marbles, which is what they wanted us to know, has to be less than or equal to 24. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.